example, I'm currently the grant lead for OSM Fiji, which is really a volunteer community, uh, OpenStreetMap community that we've started last year. Um, so I'm here to talk really about the role of it observation plays for OSM, which isn't technically very highly technical, but is really based on um, base data creation. Um, and also touch on a little bit of the activities so far for OSM Fiji. So in case you may not know, um, let's talk about what OpenStreetMap is. It's a global free, meaning free to download, access, as well as edit. It's an editable online map that is largely community-based, meaning you have a community of volunteers that are constantly contributing. Um, and it can be viewed as an open alternative data source to authoritative data sets, not to replace these data sets, but as an alternative that you can use um, so the way we generate data for OpenStreetMap is through the use of Earth observation imagery. Uh, we have a range of sources from Bing, Maxa, and Esri, and um, you can even add in your custom uh, imagery. And it's really been a global movement that's gained a lot of traction around 2010 since um, cyclone, since an earthquake, sorry, in Haiti. Um, but we see there's a lot of, uh, there's a heterogeneous mapping quality that's really attributed due to the differing level of experience of mappers, but also the concentration of these mappers being from the global north. There are currently over 133 million distinct tags, meaning um, you can really map comprehensively in OpenStreetMap where you can derive um, routes for bicycles, but even you can go something as deep as classifying the different types of building usages um, and even incorporating land use um, data sets. Um, yeah. So these are used to describe tags and particularly used to describe features in OpenStreetMap. Um, and since we're using Earth observation imagery and you're mapping remotely, it encourages local ownership of data. So OpenStreetMap is really, I would say, a movement. It's grew across the it grew across across the globe. Sorry, um, not because of the need to compete with these authoritative agencies, but due to the need for uh, immediate, current, and accessible data for humanitarian action. So through rapid response activations by HOT, which is the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. Um, the HOT community works together online through map, uh, a series of mapathons using satellite imagery as well as newly acquired drone imagery to rapidly generate map data in OSM for humanitarian response. So these activations, but also the use case has led to a proliferation of data that's really bridged the gap that has existed and in some way still exists due to the large concentration of contrib the contribution base being in the global north. So countries such as Nepal, Philippines, East Africa, and Indonesia has really experienced this growth um, due to the need for a humanitarian response. So there's been lots of use cases for OSM data. In particular, the Open Mapping Hub Asia Pacific has ingested their OSM data in InnerSafe. Um, SPREP has also made OpenStreetMap data available to serve Pacific Islands, so it's accessible via their Inform platform. Uh, also, Picrophy will be undertaking a mapathon with those in Fiji, and they'll be using this data to help with their fields, in country field surveys. And then there's also community uh, use cases, like in Valencia and Luami, where they've used this data to. Um, uh, for the purpose of local community mapping. So they've created hazard maps based on various hazards and um, derived some evacuation maps based on these using OpenStreetMap data. In terms of Earth observation imagery, it's accessible via the Hot Tasking Manager, JOSIM, and even ID Editor. And it's a reasonable and, in a way, I say cost effective source that allows us to provide data sets that can be used for decision making. And while these are these data sets are derived remotely, um, yeah, there are initiatives that undertake some form of field data verification and online verification to improve these remote mapping data sets. 
So there are also some alternatives to satellite imagery that has been used to generate uh, OpenStreetMap data. And these include the usage of citizen science or volunteer geographic information to improve OpenStreetMap. So these include mapillary, which takes street level imagery. And this is an example of what the mapillary application looks like. It's a camera mounted on top of a um, car taking 3D, 360 degree photos. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and there's also Vespucci, Map Roulette, and Map with AI. And all these are, these third party tools are consistent with OpenStreetMap, which promotes an open uh, ecosystem. So as mentioned, Earth observation imagery is heavily utilized in the creation of OpenStreetMap data, uh, whether this is remotely through volunteer driven edits, machine learning, or even um, AI, which is integrated with Map with AI. <clears throat> but all countries in the Pacific actually have access to this array of satellite imagery in the tasking manager or in ID editor or even in JOSIM. And you can also integrate custom uh, satellite imagery, or even drone imagery or street level imagery uh, in the task tasking manager to improve the mapping. <clears throat> so timely, very high resolution satellite imagery provides the solution to update our data for a very dynamic and geographically isolated region where we're experiencing a lot of population growth and developments. And this constantly rises um, this constantly increases of informal settlements and residential expansions. And these occur in um, the Pacific region quite often. So this is an example of uh, Bar. Uh, we mapped Bar last year, but the, this settlement or community has seemed to pop up in the last year or so. Yeah, so with all these tools and imagery available, uh, communities can take advantage of these resources to firstly encourage local ownership but also improve our OpenStreetMap data quality and quantity for our community, country, or even region. So the way we start off to bridge this gap, <coughs> sorry, that exists in the technical uh, in the Pacific region, is uh, through partnerships and community. So these include local and regional mapping communities that exist, but also have grown in the region. So a good example of a community um, is the Asia Pacific Open Mapping Hub derived under the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. We also have OSG Oceania OpenStreetMap Special Interest Group, and then you also have OSN Fiji. Um, yeah, we've seen a proliferation, proliferation of bodies and communities that have popped up that can assist us. Um, as all Pacific countries are actually listed as hot priority countries. And this has led to a increase in the provision of financial, but also technical support for mapping bodies in our region. Just recently, we've seen Kiribati women in mapping based in Kiribati um, start with the activities for field data collection and validation um, under hot OSM. So there is an important there's also an important need to socialize the value of open data, OSM, Earth observation, um, but I think also the geospatial industry in general, um, so that these communities can really utilize and benefit from the existing systems and systems that are currently being built. So this is really a blueprint of how OSM Fiji has been established. In 2021, in April, Till date, we were awarded a community impact micro grant, which is still running. And the grant has covered activities that's focused on community building, knowledge sharing, but also improving our own OpenStreetMap data. And for one year, even though we've run nine mapathons, solo mapathons, um, we've seen an increase, uh, a total edits of 44,000 and also 70, 000, around 70,000 buildings being generated or digitized. We've hosted around 18 workshops um, and these include socialization workshops and crash course training sessions where we train uh, participants on QGIS, Kobo Toolbox. And we also have experts come in and talk about their experience in the industry, uh, whether they are surveying professionals, uh, analysts, or even uh, remote sensing experts.
As a part of this microgrant, we've also undertaken field data update and validation exercises, which are focused on the CBD, Sensuva. Uh, for this, we're using Vespucci uh, to validate the data that we have digitized in our past mapathons. Um, and we've also seen in our online activities that our participants aren't necessarily only from Fiji. Um, we see a broader participation from Nepal, India, Kiribati, Samoa, and even Tonga. So aside from the grant, the formation of partnerships and collaborations has a primary focus. Um, there's something that Eileen actually said really well. <clears throat> She's the Pickery project manager, where she mentioned that forming partnerships um, not only at a, this level, but also at the community level is really crucial to ensuring that our data remains relevant to the current context that actually informs development in general. And in this case, we were focused on humanitarian activities during a disaster. So uh, in 2021, we hosted a joint mapathon with the Pickery project where we focused on utilizing the Pacific Risk Information System and also digitizing some data in OSM. And this year, we'll also be focusing on priority countries. Uh, we'll be hosting mapathons to improve and update buildings and roads for these countries to aid their in-country surveys. Additionally, with the Open Mapping Hub Asia Pacific, um, we've hosted mapathons on the Map and Chat Hour, and they also help us with the whole of Fiji uh, mapping. So overall, I think the stats or the numbers really provide an overview of how us and Fiji and our activities have led to a proliferation of data in a semi-consistent way. Um, if you see the graph um, in 2016, the increase of activities is really due to uh, Cyclone Winston, the mapathons hosted uh, through Cyclone Winston. And then in 20. 19, late 2019, uh, this spike is attributed really to the mapathon hosted by the Common Sensing Project. But then from 2021 onwards, you see that there is, in a way, an increase in the number of active mappers in Fiji. Um, that's really attributed to the difference in attendance in mapathons, but we're focusing really on the blue line where we look at the hot task key manager because that's where majority of our uh, mapping tasks are hosted. And then again, linked to that graph is the increase in mapped buildings for Fiji. <clears throat> and again, if you look at the blue line, which is via the hot tasking manager, since 2021, we actually started in April, May. <laughs> um, you can see there's an increase in the digitization of buildings uh, for OSM Fiji or Fiji in general. So long term, we want to increase the uptake of OSM data by individuals for research, but also communities and organizations for utilization, whether that's to improve or use for specific purposes. So Pickerfee is really a good example of that. Um, we also want to increase the complexity and the diversity of our data. As I mentioned, there's 133 million distinct tags. We want to focus on building the road networks, uh, street objects, and even including disability access, for example. We also want to diversify our trainings and workshops, we like to host more specific or project specific workshops, um, but also diversify our attendees. <clears throat> we want to encourage the older de uh, demographic in our industry to attend as often those in Fiji. Even though it's a volunteer group, it's often seen as a young people's club, um, despite not being a youth mappers chapter. We also wanna build on our partnerships across the region. So taking lessons learned to help support the growth of other Pacific Island OpenStreetMap communities. So we're helping OpenStreetMap Samoa with a little bit of the activities. Um, yeah, and sustain contributions and community. So in the near future, we'll be formalizing OpenStreetMap Fiji. And this will allow us to become endorsed by the OpenStreetMap Foundation and apply for grants and run some larger scale activities. Yeah, so that's all I have. Um, I think there's a question and answer session at the end. And if you want to contact or know more about us, you can see that on the uh, Connect With Us panel. So thank you.